Hello everybody, as always my name is Chris and we're back with something pretty different. We're going to be having a look at uh, films, television shows, even, even books and music on this game. Basically anything that is in the video game because that can go over on main channel. And today we're having a look at Tron. So what is this series? Well I'm calling it Leaving the Rock. And the premise is pretty simple. It's a common and running joke at this point that I've spent my entire life living under a rock. Oh, and those comments and jokes are not without merit, unfortunately. It, it is true. I, I have missed quite a bit, if I'm being honest. And that's what this series is really all about, is taking these things I've missed and finally catching up on them. And, and as I previously mentioned, today we'll be talking about Tron. Firstly, I will mention a couple of rules. Things that should be very, very obvious, but I've done film reviews before, and oh boy, some people did not get this message. Number one, I am not a professional film reviewer. This is not my job, nor is it what I'm trying to do, or what I'm trying to make this series. Secondly, this is a first impression of review, meaning I've only seen the film once, and no doubt I may have missed some little details or some easter eggs. Although, if you can think of anything I have actually missed, let me know in the comments down below, because I'm always eager to learn about these things. Oh, and there will be spoilers, but if you want to skip the spoilers and go straight to my spoiler-free conclusion, time code somewhere. So, Tron. Tron is a 1982 American science fiction action film by Walt Disney Productions, directed by Steven Lisberger, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, and starring Jeff Bridges, Bruce Boxleitner, I hope I've got that right, I did look it up, David Warner, and Cindy Morgan. Tron is based around Jeff Bridges' character Kevin Flynn, a computer programmer who attempts to get back at the executive vice president who took credit for all his work, Ed Dillinger finds himself captured by Ed Dillinger's sentient program, the Master Control Program, and is transported inside of the world of the computer to what they call the grid, and has to escape the MCP and then find a way to stop it. To talk about this film, or really any film, I'm going to try and split it into several categories, and let's start with the story and the pacing. I really enjoyed the story, although I recognise it has its cliché elements. To me, it, it just it felt like a classic... 80 story. It, it, it feels like anyone who enjoys 80s movies are going to enjoy this, despite some noticeable flaws. The pacing felt a little off at some points, with some parts feeling like they took longer than they needed to, and other parts, especially the ending, feeling incredibly rushed. I mean, when the credits rolled, I didn't realise I was actually at the end of the film. Now, talk about the acting, and I might get some hate for this. A classic film like Tron will have a lot of defenders, and do you know what? Maybe this is a little spoiler at the end, I will now be one of those defenders. However, I must point out the acting wasn't always great. There were definitely moments it felt a little cartoonish, a little comical. Uh, Jeff Bridges, unsurprisingly, did a great job, but even then there were a few moments, although that was probably more down to the script than anything else. The script is not the strongest. There are definitely parts that feel overacted, but, but honestly, all of this, it, it kind of clicks quite well with the whole 80s vibe. And let's be clear, it is not the only film of that era to make those mistakes. Now for the music, and I've got to be honest, I, I don't really have a lot to say about the music. If I'm being blunt, I didn't notice it all that much when I was watching the film. I, I've gone back now and gone out of my way to specifically listen to the music, and I do enjoy it. But I feel like it was good enough for the film, but that was kind of it. Like, I don't feel I'll be listening to the soundtrack while I'm doing other things, you know, like writing future scripts. But I felt the music was solid enough. It, it fitted the movie well. It certainly sounded good. I don't have any real criticism of it. It was good enough for the movie and it was exactly what it was meant to be. But it's not one of those tracks where you're going to be hearing it again and again and again. Like, I mean, there's so many examples of that, of music so good that you just listen to it, even, after, even not anything to do with the film. You just listen to it because you want to listen to it. This isn't one of them for me. And of course we mustn't forget the visuals and this is something that is very important with this film. And it would be so easy to be critical of the CGI. I mean it was dated even for the time period. I mean this came out in 1982 which was two years after Star Wars Episode 5 
And I think we can all agree Star Wars Episode 5 has vastly superior visual and special effects. However, I'm okay with that. They weren't trying to be the most realistic they, they could ever be. They were trying to create a new world based very much on how video games looked and felt during that time period. If anything, they were pushing too far. They were trying to do things that the technology wasn't really there for. And when you consider that, they actually did really well. Watching it in 2021, the effects do throw you, but then you kind of get into the world and it stops. It's just part of the vibe of the film and it, it kind of feels right. Now, let's talk about some standout moments, about things that really stood out to me personally. The first has to be Flynn's arcade. Look, I know this isn't an important thing, okay? But I love video games, I love arcades, and I've never really got to go to an 80s style arcade. And I've always wanted to, so seeing this, I just loved it. Plus, it does give us a solid introduction to Flynn. Next has to be the two competitive scenes. First, the disc game, and then the light cycle game. I don't know what it was about these scenes, but the disc game really got my interest, and the light cycle game just had me hooked. At this point, the story wasn't entirely clear, but I didn't care because I was having fun, I was enjoying what I was watching, and I just wanted to see what happened next. Those games managed to capture that retro gaming vibe just perfectly, and even if you want to try and be judgmental about the graphics, it's still really enjoyable. And finally, the two things I wasn't the biggest fan of. Firstly was Flynn's entrance into the digital world. Look, I get this was always going to take some suspension and disbelief. I mean, a man was being sucked into a computer system. It was always going to be a little shaky, but... A laser shooting him, like, one little piece at a time? Transferring him, again, through those one piece at a time inside a mainframe, and that just works perfectly? I'm sorry, but this is where the suspension of disbelief has to be at its strongest, and mine just broke. There were so many ways they could have got him into the computer. I, I, again, even looking at how the technology was at the time, there were so many concepts and ways this could have been done, and I didn't like the laser. I, I had to... It felt a bit silly and a bit cheesy at that point. I had to, I had to push myself to keep watching. I'm happy I did, but that really, really didn't work. And of course the ending. I know I've already brought this up when it comes to the pacing, but it's worth repeating because it ends so goddamn quickly. The MCP is destroyed. Okay, Flynn gets his credit, Dillinger gets disgraced, and then Flynn is the CEO. He goes from not even working for NCOM to being the CEO, and this happens immediately. We see nothing about it. I mean, how did that even happen? He didn't even take over from Dillinger. Dillinger was the executive vice president. He wasn't the CEO. It's just... Ah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And it's annoying because it's right at the end. And that's it. It's at the end. And the credits roll. And there's nothing to pull you back into the film. Because it's right at the end. Nothing brings you back in. You just end up left feeling, huh? Okay, so first of all, welcome back to the spoiler skippers. You want to know what I think of the film. I think I would have to give it about a 7.5 out of 10. I honestly loved it. I really enjoyed watching it. I'm so happy I decided to start this series with that film. However, it does have its problems and its flaws. From the other acting, to the poor pacing, to some areas in the visual and special effects that... They look right for what they are, but I feel like for some people it's going to be a bit of an issue. Would I recommend it? Yes. Yes, I would recommend it, but with an asterisk. If you enjoy science fiction films and have an enjoyment, an appreciation and love for video games, especially of, of this era, I reckon you'll love this film as much as I did. If those are not your kind of thing, maybe give this film a skip. It's not for everyone, and that's why it's remembered as a cult classic rather than as a much-loved hit. For me, though, it was exactly what I was hoping the film was going to be. And that was Tron. That was Leaving the Rock, episode one, and that was the film. 
Let me know what you thought about Tron down below, as well as anything I might have missed, and also what you think of the series, of, of the concept, of how I handled it, everything. As always, all constructive criticism is welcome, it's what makes this series better, it's what makes this channel better, it's what makes anything I do better. Thank you so much for watching, my name as always is Chris, and I will hopefully see you all in the next video. The computer an extension of the human intellect. The ENCOM 511, center of the most calculating intelligence on Earth. Programmed by Master Control to survive by all means.